The most powerful motivation is from inside to outside. Psychologists make a basic distinction between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Having intrinsic motivation means doing something for its own sake, like playing a game just for the joy of playing. On the other hand, extrinsic motivation pulls you by the power of some external benefit or tangible reward that you'll attain by taking action. Like in the case of a professional athlete who plays primarily for money rather than for the fun or challenge of the sport. It also, for example, influences business and sales executives who are driven fundamentally by the income they receive rather than by the love of the service they provide. Of course, extrinsic motivation can be very powerful. Many people go to a job they neither enjoy nor care about just to receive a paycheck. You can bet that these people would not go to their job every day if they knew no one was going to pay them for their work. Some of these people actively hate their jobs, but the extrinsic motivation is strong enough to keep them going faithfully every day. Suppose you choose a particular career because of the money. What happens when there's more money in doing something else? Since there's no inner drive to stay on any particular path, the journey will be arduous and motivation will tend to weaken whenever the external reward seems remote or out of sight. Some people spend their entire lives wandering from one field to another, always looking for an easier way to find that pot of gold, never achieving a significant goal worthy of their inner potential. But how powerful is extrinsic motivation in a larger sense? How does the power of extrinsic compare to intrinsic motivation when the topic is doing one's best, peak performance, or human greatness. For instance, you may recall from history that the exquisitely beautiful armless statue of Venus de Milo was carved by an unknown sculptor. When a farmer dug up the soon-to-be world-famous work of art while plowing his field, a renowned museum official sadly reflected, what a great pity it was that the sculptor would never be recognized by thousands of admirers, nor would he ever know how valuable the statue became hundreds of years later. The farmer retorted that it must have been a labor of love for someone to be able to have envisioned such perfection and bring it forth with just a chisel and a shapeless piece of stone. Just creating something of such quality, said the farmer, would have been payment in full for me. You can't commission a masterpiece. Human greatness can't be extrinsically motivated. It must be compelled from within. Do you see what that means for you? If you want to be the best, whether it's the best manager, the best salesperson, the best parent, or the best athlete on your team, you have to light that fire within yourself. Real motivation is that drive from within. You know where you're going because you have a compelling image inside not a travel poster on the wall. Concern for excellence has been proven to be the greatest internal motivation of all. Vince Lombardi, the legendary coach of the Green Bay Packers during their pro football dynasty, believed that the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, regardless of their chosen field of endeavor. Concern for excellence means that you're motivated every day to be the best you can possibly be in whatever you do. And that's why the words empower and envision are so vital to team performance and quality. It must be their power and their vision that compels them, not that of the leader. The success of our efforts depends not so much on the efforts themselves, but rather on our motive for doing them. The greatest companies and the greatest men and women in all walks of life have achieved their greatness out of a desire to express something within themselves that had to be expressed. A desire to solve a problem using their skills as best they could. This is not to say that many of these individuals did not earn a great deal of money and prestige for what they produced. Many did, of course, and continue to build fortunes. But the key to their successes is to be found in the fact that they were motivated more by providing excellence in a product or service to fill a need 
than by any thought of profit. The problem is that money alone does not stimulate intrinsic motivation and therefore is a means, not an end. Money is like fuel for your car. It's not the destination. It's not the journey. It's only part of the transportation system. Make your why grab you by your very soul. You'll never be disappointed for very long, and you'll stay committed regardless of market conditions or setbacks. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke about this as eloquently as anyone ever has when he said, if an individual is called to be a street sweeper, he or she should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. Your question of the day, are you more motivated by material rewards, money, and status, or by internal values concerning excellence and self-actualization? And today's action, since intrinsic motivation is the most enduring, really explore the internal drives among your team, your loved ones, and yourself. Start today. You may be surprised. Seeing is believing, or is it? When your eyes are open, you see the world that lies outside yourself. You see the items of the room you're in, the people and the view of the landscape through the window. You take for granted that the objects are real and separate from yourself. However, successful individuals see the act of achieving in advance, vivid, multidimensional, clear. Champions know that what you see is who you'll be. When you close your eyes, images and thoughts flow through your mind. You may review memories of past events or preview future possibilities. You can daydream about what may or what might have been, and your imagination will take you beyond the limits of space and time. Most people attach little importance to these inner visions. They may seem pleasantly irrelevant or uncomfortably at odds with the accepted external reality. If you're like most people, you grow up with the idea that seeing is believing. In other words, you need to physically see something with your own eyes to believe that it's real. I know many successful individuals who live this way. But there's an attitude that suggests, before you can see it, you have to believe it. And this premise holds that our belief system is so powerful that thoughts can actually cause things to happen in the physical world. I also know many successful individuals who live according to this notion of reality. So which concept is near the truth? Do you have to see it before you can believe it or believe it before you see it? The answer is both are basically true. If you can see something in your mind's eye, and you imagine it over and over again, you'll begin to believe it is really there in substance. As a result, your actions, both physical and mental, will move to bring about in reality the images that you're visualizing. During my university years at the U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis, before I became a naval pilot, I underwent training in aircraft recognition. All of us sat at one end of a hall, while silhouettes of American and foreign military aircraft were flashed on a screen at speeds similar to combat situations. We were supposed to write down the numerical designations and the names of the planes, such as A-4 Skyhawk, F-11 F Tiger, MiG-21, and so forth. But the task became more difficult each week because they kept adding more planes, scrambling the order, and speeding up the projection. Finally, it got ridiculous because the images were going by faster than an MTV music video, so that most of us saw only a blur, and some didn't see anything. I began to see planes that weren't even invented yet. When it came time for the final exam, I didn't know for certain which planes I was seeing. I wrote down hunches, intuitions, and reflex responses. But when the test results were announced, virtually everyone had scored a perfect 100%. We had seen the planes, even if we didn't necessarily believe it. For me, that test proved that images can be stored and retained unconsciously at incredible speeds. And those stored images, when recalled, 
can enhance performance. So what about the thousands of flickering images we see on a TV, computer, or movie screen? What about commercials? Do we have to believe the products really do all those amazing things before we buy them? Do viewers have to think that violent scenes in movies and TV are actually occurring in real life for there to be a negative effect on their behavior? Many people believe that violent fantasy has no impact on their lives whatsoever because they think they're too intelligent to be swayed by it. Well, I've got news for them. Whatever you see or experience, real or imagined, consciously or subliminally, when repeated vividly over and over, does affect your behavior and definitely can influence you to buy a product or buy into a lifestyle, good or bad. By rehashing fears and problems, you can make yourself depressed. As a result, you can botch a business deal, hurt a relationship, or lower your performance. By forecasting a gloomy outcome in your mind's eye, you can act as your own witch doctor and produce a modern-day kind of voodoo that will fulfill your negative prediction with uncanny accuracy. On the other hand, by replaying in your mind's eye the best game you've ever played, you can repeat that best game again when the stakes are even higher and the pressure's on. And by mentally pre-playing the best game you've ever imagined, you can set the stage for a world-class performance. This instant replay and instant pre-play applies to anything from a successful sales call or athletic event to the effective motivation of your teammates and your children. Your attitudes and beliefs are the software program driving you every day on life's journey. Breakthroughs in neuroscience have confirmed that neural pathways in your brain, physical highways loaded with electrochemical messages called traffic, can be rewired to create new images of achievement. New habits of excellence can be internalized and virtual reality becomes reality. Thoughts do become things. Observation, imitation, repetition, internalization leads to realization. The law of attraction takes action over time to gain permanent traction. So don't think about missed opportunities and past mistakes. Concentrate on the rewards of success and desired results. Your mind stores as reality anything you vividly, repeatedly imagine over time. Become a student of change. As the world becomes more interconnected, events outside your industry and career have an impact on your business, your family, and your pocketbook. To be successful today, you must understand that world. Without that, you won't be prepared to innovate. You'll only be able to react and to avoid. Many people will tell you that it doesn't matter how well informed you are. You can't do anything about it anyway, goes the refrain, so why bother to find out about things? Well, here's the newspaper editorial that sums up this attitude. The world is too big for us. Too much going on. Too much crime, violence, and change. Try as you will. You get behind in the race. It's an incessant strain to keep pace, and still you lose ground. Science empties its discoveries on you so fast that you stagger beneath them in hopeless bewilderment. Everything in business and life is high pressure. Human nature can't endure much more. This newspaper editorial reads as if it were written last week, but it actually appeared more than 180 years ago on June 16, 1833, in the Atlantic Journal, back in the good old days. How can you avoid being a casualty of the bad new days? Well, take the offensive. Instead of stewing, start doing. Pay attention to the early warning signs of change. Look for changes in your industry, your family life, and your region. You can't innovate if your understanding of change is misinformed, incomplete, or outdated. Success in the new era is heavily dependent upon innovation, creativity, and solving problems for which there are no precedents. While new technology is often the driver of economic and social change, the real opportunities are created by individuals who apply technology in new ways. Fred Smith, operating outside of the airline industry, created Federal Express 
because he saw the trend of speed and delivery of goods and services. Your success depends on how well you think. You're not paid to collect, sort, store, and retrieve information, although you do these things every day. You're paid to interpret that information and create and implement new ideas. So ask yourself, what can I offer that they aren't offering? Where's the niche that hasn't been developed? How can I add value to the service or products I promote? What would people pay for that isn't available now? Which consumer groups and Internet communities are the most likely prospects who want what I provide? What trends will change my and their assumptions about the quality of life? Breakthrough ideas often occur when you're calmly searching for opportunities. They rarely occur when you're anxious and frustrated. Close your eyes and dream.